Hello and welcome to Talkin' Baseball. I've lost my voice. A bunch of interleague sweeps. Sticky stuff in the Bronx. Not talking BBD's weekend. Let's do it. Talking Baseball. Hello and welcome to Talking Baseball. Myself, Talking Jake, ironically, with this voice, Trevor Plouffe, BBD on the ones and twos. Jam, getting ready for that midweek episode and doing the Domingo Herman breakdown right now. Uh, it's going to be a sultry voice up for Poppy. Uh, Trev, I. You're going to have to go listen to some of the Talking Yanks up last night. It's as bad as you've heard a human voice sound. The only way I could talk is if I talked like the manager for Major League. Dorn, get in front of it. No, I see you sound better like that. Yeah, so if, if there's any yeah. topics you need me to talk like this episode, I can go down here if we need it. But yeah, pretty tough. Not ideal. That's more like uh, Bobby Boucher, hey, Bobby uh, the Water Boucher. Boys, that guy. Oh, okay. Yeah. Oh, that that coach. Yeah, I got a couple. That coach. Yeah. I got a couple coach O's in the comments. Uh, oh I, yeah. I got some Batman. Where is she? Don't bring up Coach O. USC should have never freaking let him go. Yankees split two with the Twins this weekend. Uh Trev. Oh, I don't like that one. No. How are you doing, Big Daddy? Shaky boy, I'm doing great. I I also had an amazing weekend. I did not lose my voice. I sound as good as ever. Uh, but I'm excited to talk ball. You know, you know, I love Monday apps, yeah. dude. Like, you know, we we watch ball all weekend. I was grilling last night. I made a couple uh, tri tips. Put a pork chop tomahawk on the grill. Did it up. Um, all while having my TV on, watching some games. I have an announcement to make. I think I'll wait. I think I, I'll wait towards the end to to do it. Okay. Uh, but it's something that I'm really proud of, and I want to share it with the people. I love that. Uh, yeah, and, Trev, you. to get us both a little jazzy, you're coming out this week. Oh, yes. Oh. I am. I am. I'm excited. New York, man. New York. Is it summer yet? No, it's not summer yet. So that's part of the problem. Uh, we got a taste of summer. Uh, we, got, mm. we got three 80 and sunny days Whoa. Uh, in April, which... Uh, Led to a couple blue moons. Definitely didn't help my voice, if we're being honest about it. Um, but yeah, man, and Trev, you know, the Monday episode, you know, we miss a lot of baseball. It, you know, you can miss four games. Uh, that's why we get excited. Sundays now, I come into the office, me and BBD, we get ready for talking Yanks. Get the screen set up. You got like six games going on. And yesterday, after we recorded... I caught the uh, the late afternoon game, so I was catching. I mean, the Padres Brewers last inning was insane Ooh. yesterday, um, yep. and to be able to watch that, I feel so much better being able to talk baseball with you and the people. So, um, sh- shall we? Are the Rangers legit? Ooh. Find out later in the episode. <laughs> the Sunday night baseball Rangers, Trev. I'll tell you what is legit light box and you're saying okay fellas yes what's that about i'll tell you what as someone who's given the same mother's day gift for the past 20 years or so a some, hug some flowers and a hug trev okay. i get the flowers too a card um light box lab grown diamonds do all the work for you this mother's day with pricing you'll understand studs necklaces these gems will make mom's jaw drop. Uh, and mm. whether it's your mom, hey, maybe your spouse, Trev. I know you like to take care of your spouse over there. I guess I got to start doing that, huh? Uh, yeah. Skip the socks. Skip the flowers. Become the MVP of Mother's Day with a gift she'll never forget. Promo code TALKINBASEBALL10. 10% off your purchase of, sh- of Lightbox Lab Grown Diamonds. Use code TALKINBASEBALL10. 10% off your purchase. There's a link in the description. Fellas, pick it up. Pick it up a little bit. And Lightbox can do that for you. They're going to help. Fellas need to pick it up, dude. Just be, a, just be a better husband or partner, whatever you need to be. Just step it up. That little bit of effort goes a long way. That's right. Speaking of... 
Hit it, baby. Trevor Plouffe, your Minnesota Twins faced off with my New York Yankees. And man, it was a blowout. We got to laugh about it a little bit. 11-2 Twinkies. And then they come back to win the next game. Are they going to sweep four in the boogie down? Au contraire, mon frere. Two amazing starting pitching performances by Domingo Herman and Garrett Cole. Wow. Yankees twin split. Um, and hey, how about a little news? Pablo Lopez, a little extension, four years. Enjoy that money. We're going to talk about this series a little bit because it's me and Trev's former teams. Orioles take two out of three from the Chicago White Sox. This Orioles team is winning me over, Trev. The lineup is deep and it will punish you. And we saw that in games one and games two. Later in the game, they put rallies together, big numbers on the scoreboard to win it, to take the series after Chicago was up 3-0 in the first and up in that last game. Grayson Rodriguez bounces back after a slow start. I'm drinking some Orioles Kool-Aid. Maybe the two best teams pairing up this weekend, Trev. Rays and the Jays. These Rays can't lose, baby. They lose their first set, the Blue Jays. They take the first two games of the series. Rasmussen Barrios in that first game. Bo Bichette, five hits. I love him, man. That's all he does. Kikuchi was great in game two. Rays. McClanahan, the offense, puts up a crooked number. Manoa gets hit a little bit. Uh Uh-oh. Rays salvage the series, but they show they aren't invincible anymore. The Red Sox, they've taken the first three from the Halos. It's Marathon Monday in the Bean as they go for the four-game sleep. Sweep, our guy Otani. He's on the bump today. That's exciting. Garrett Whitlock. With a big boy start. That could be important for those Boston Red Sox. Uh, Kike Endeavors in the first game. Justin Turner. He might like that cream monster, huh? Uh, Looks like he was built to be a Red Sox. See if the Red Sox can take four today. Trev's Texas Rangers on Sunday night baseball. Get the blowout win with the Heen Dog on the bump to win the series. After they win the bread games. That middle game, though, Hunter Brown does it again. Watch out for this guy. Uh, Astros, still a little slow out of the gate. Rangers get a nice series win behind another nice start by the Heen Dog. Simeon, Nathaniel Lowe. Man, those guys are ballplayers, ballplayers. And Trev, that's what happened in your American League. I mean, you are just different. Being able to get through a little baseball <laughs> boogie with that voice, that crusty, disgusting <laughs> voice. I think people have, everyone's probably turned this episode off already. And if you haven't, thank you so much for sticking with us because that, you are. Yeah. Are you sure all you did was talk to your friend? Like, whoa. Trev. There wasn't something else going on. You guys didn't go to karaoke, maybe. Or... My voice is a million times better from yesterday, which is the crazy part. Um, okay. And it's crazy that the Rays are 14 and 2 and in top of the AL East. Yankees and Jays are 10 and 6. Orioles are 9 and 7. Red Sox are 8 and 8. AL East is all 500 or better right now. Twins 10 and 6 on top of the Central. The 9 and 7 Guard Dogs. White Sox 6 and 10. Tigers and Royals. Oh no. Texas Rangers 9 and 6. Nice fellas. Mariners are up to 8 and 8 with their four game win streak. Angels 7 and 8. Astros 7 and 9. Oakland Athletics, 3-13. and 13. Yikes. Mm, and mm. those are your American League standings. Uh, let's start with the A's. <laughs> oh, my God. Yeah, I, J- I think even Mark Kotze said something this weekend. Like, it's just not a competitive atmosphere. Dude. They, I mean, they walk 17 people. We can't. I can't. This is That's for later. That's for later. They're interleague. Go Mets. Is uh, that true? They walk 17 people? Jerry Blevins is, like, sad because he's a former Oakland A. And, like, to, dude, he, to see the franchise it, like that, it makes him sad. It doesn't – like, okay. They're sure, you might move. not have, like, crazy major league talent on your roster, but you got professional ball players out there. We're talking 17 walks. I know. Like, that's not like a real thing, dude. <laughs> like, Jake. Yeah. 
I don't think you'd like you could go out there and throw enough strikes. You might get hit around a little bit. Seventeen walks, yeah. nibbling like that. I didn't watch that game, obviously. Thank God I didn't watch that game because I might have just thrown my TV off the wall. I would have one of those people like that fake it after the Super Bowl and just throw their TV or punch it. I would have done it. Seventeen's nuts. Let's not let's get off that. I, I can't. Let's let's not talk Oakland A's. Um Trev, I, I think uh, you know, we made some jokes Friday. Uh, again, our former teams, Yankees, Twins, uh, Pablo Lopez extension literally just happens. Uh, we've got some some quote-unquote sticky stuff from Herman Garrett Cole with one of the best starts of this baseball season. Uh, the Twins with a comeback win and one of the biggest blowouts. Um, I don't know. I, I think both teams walk away okay, but also disappointed. <laughs> I think the Yankees, what happens if you lose the first two games right. and you split and win in the next two games, you feel pretty good about yourselves. The Twins, on the other hand, with a chance to win their first series since, what, 2014 when old Coach Trev was on the mm. team uh, against the Yankees, they're feeling a little less happy with themselves. Although, you know, like they, they played pretty good ball out there. They had some decent performances. And like you said, you just got chewed up by a few starting pitchers there. I mean, Cole looked electric yesterday. Uh, Pablo kind of went toe to toe with them. Yeah, you know, took the L. Uh, only two runs in six innings, but uh, definitely a good series. And I think you know, look, Twins aren't scared of anybody. I told you, like that confidence is reverberating throughout the clubhouse. Carlos Correa being a big part of it, and he hasn't really gotten going like crazy like he can. I mean, he had a decent game in uh, game two there, um, but it's two good teams. Joe Ryan, you didn't even mention my guy. Yeah, coming out that first game, shutting it down. It's not easy to pitch with a. I'm not going to say it's not easy because it is easy to pitch with a lead like easy. that. But a sometimes, like, you let off the gas a little right. bit. He sure as shit did not. Seven innings pitched with one earned run, only three hits. He had 10 Ks in that game. Um, but definitely a, a good series. But you're de- you're feeling you're feeling a little disappointed. If you're, that, that flight home, you're like, we could have we right. really been celebrating here. And instead, we're like, okay, we'll take it. The... Uh... Garrett Cole was really good. Um, you know, we we talk about starting pitchers, and there's going to be five days you have your best stuff, five days you don't have your best stuff, and all the other starts in the middle. Uh, he had his best stuff, uh, and it was it was dominant. You uh, you forget he is one of the guy guys in this league. I don't want to say you forget, but we get so excited to talk about the other guys that Garrett Cole not having a sigh. Um, and you know, uh, coming out of sticky stuff, like uh, I don't know, Garrett Garrett Cole. It's almost like we're I don't want to say bored of him to a degree, but you just kind of know what you're gonna get. And he gave him the business. Um, and yeah, uh, if you're the twins, you kind of shrug because man, you saw it. Domingo Herman looked equally as dominant. Um, and yeah, Trev, I I know I, it's not much, and Jimmy's got the breakdown coming. But do you want to talk about Domingo Herman at all? He's got um, some substance on the hand. Your guy Rocco's not happy. Um, it was uh, it was rosin. Yeah, and so I'm I'm kind of indifferent on the whole thing, James. There's a few. I think you can see it from both sides. James Hoy, who is the crew chief, said that he saw rosin right on like a little too much a little too sticky which i don't really understand because that's a that is a legal substance uh that you can use so he said he saw it on a pinky finger told him to wash it off which is interesting to me because like why if it's a legal substance why do you why do you have to wa- wash it off right uh but if the umpire asks you to do something you should probably do it uh, he comes back out the next inning same substance is there and they decided not to toss him and Herman said, yes, I have a rosin bag that's in the dugout, and I just put it back on. That's, I think, what Rocco took up offense to was, well, you told him to do this, and he didn't do it. And if you're a parent, you sure as hell know that feeling. <laughs> you have to tell someone a couple different times to do it. And so Rocco took offense to it. He ends up getting tossed, which is kind of, like, funny. And then Domingo Herman still goes out there and is able to do his thing. I, I don't know. I'm, like I said, indifferent about it. If it was just rosin, then he was totally within his rights to to have that on his hand. If it was something different, then I don't like it. It's basically my take. Yeah, I, I'm excited for Jim's breakdown. I, I think there's 
there's some interesting nuance that like Domingo Herman, because of the pitch timer, he's he gets his rosin from a bag in the dugout before he goes out for the inning. So he doesn't want to do like the rosin dance between pitches. That's a little that's a little shady, no it's, doubt. I hey, I'm, I won't argue you with that, but that's that's what they're <laughs> that's saying. That's the reason he's using. And for, um, this is mommy's it. cough medicine. <laughs> yeah, that's blue moon. Um, <laughs> that yeah, man, I I don't know. And then it's funny they tell him to wash his hands and like start fresh, and then he puts more. He does that, then he puts rosin back on, and Rocco's kind of like, what are we doing here, fellas? Um, that Yeah, I mean, our our baseball society gets a little too excited anytime there's something with foreign substance now. Um, but, yeah, I think uh, Booney and Rocco were both honest in the pressers after. Um, and, yeah, it's just it's pretty tough that it per- it pairs with Domingo Herman's best start of the season easily. Couple different things. I guess we need to look at spin rate and see, like, has it jumped this season? Is it did it go down or up depending on you know when that was in the game? And then Rocco, along the Twins' Twitter Twitter sphere, excuse me, and all the social media accounts, they've been mentioning like Rocco's like a little bit more fired up mm. this year, like a little bit more ornery. And I don't know if that's on purpose or maybe he's just having a, you know couple bad days or something like that. But the general consensus is we like it. Mm, okay. We like fired up Rocco. Okay. Cause you know, Rocco's a very yeah. chill dude Yeah, uh, on, on the surface, but I think he's got that dog in him. It's kind of letting it out a little bit. I, like I'm all about it. Like you, the twins need to have that. The fans, you guys are so nice. We love you. And people of Minnesota, Minnesota nice is a great thing. The twins should not be Minnesota nice. The twins should be absolute killers out there. And I think maybe Rocco's seen it. Maybe Carlos Correa is just rubbing off on everybody. I mean, he was putting that, putting that gas in the Ferrari. Putting the gas in his Ferrari, man. Him you and you guys Boris, love that. You guys love that. Him and Boris should write a kid's book together. Um uh other <laughs> uh Edward uh Julian gets the call for the twins. Uh minor league on base machine who you might have also saw for Team Canada in the WBC. The Twins like him a lot. He's probably one of the other reasons they were able to move on from Luis Arise. I think they think he can be a top-of-the-lineup OBP guy for them. Career like 424 minor league on base percentage or something crazy. Um, And when they lock up Pablo Lopez and you pair it with something like that, it's like, okay, the the Twins – had a plan and they are executing on it. So, um, good for good for the twins. Vibes are riding high, and I guess now's a great time to announce what's happening. I um, had a few meetings. People know I've been having a few meetings with Bally Sports North, and we've kind of been trying to figure things out. And over the weekend, we finalized a deal. So I will be doing some pre and post. Uh, sometimes from right here in this studio, wow. I'm going to change a little bit of the background right behind me and we'll just rock and roll. Uh, but I'm also going to be going out uh, to some of the games and doing some like sideline stuff, like in the dugout wow. with a suit on. Wow. Um, I should be there for the Angels Dodgers series. I'm taking a road trip to Tampa and Toronto wow. with the guys, with the fellas. So we'll see what kind of mischief I get into. I'm going to be professional. I swear. When are you going, so to, professional. when are you going to Toronto, kid? I'll let you know. Bro. Okay. Uh, uh, but I'm excited, dude, because, you know, um, there's no lack of confidence over here. I no. think people know that. But I'm proud of myself because I challenged myself uh, to get in, you know, the booth and to start doing some stuff with the Twins and Bally's, and uh, it came to fruition. So I'm, I'm excited about it, and I want to thank everyone that kind of, like, helped me get here. Uh, so that's it, man. Twins split the series. But we get Pablo and Coach Trev. How about I mean, that? The ratings are going to go through the roof. Yeah, they are, aren't they? Uh, I mean, coming live from Magnum Condom Studio. Uh, that's, <laughs> I don't think I'm allowed to call it that. I think that's going to be big. Uh, congrats, buddy. Um, that'll, Thank you. That'll be cool. Um, you know, get some tips from Kelsey Winger. Maybe she can I'm going you. to. Yeah. Kelsey, Jerry, Glenn Perkins, Justin Morneau. Just don't make a fucking ass of yourself, okay? 
I think I'm going to be okay. I'm going to really button it up. I might have a joke from, you know, now and then. You can have a joke. Keep it keep it a little spicy. You know, I think that's what they like about me. Okay, I'm not just going to go mm. in there and say, hold the mic like this. No, bro. I, I let, Wild card. Dude, D- David Cohn calls the ESPN games, and last night he's he awesome. gets a little out of control. And Coney's, Coney's got a weird side. Like, you know, look, yeah, he look, does. look up who Coney was in the 80s and 90s. Like, he was yeah. a guy guy that he's got stories that, uh, you know, for Yankee games, if it gets out of hand, he'll, you know, he'll bust them out. Good. He'll He'll talk some blue moons. And uh, on ESPN, you know, they're Disney. He, uh... <laughs> what did he say about Bruce Bochy last night? He said uh, he's walking like uh, Woody from Toy Story when they repaired oh, yeah. him. <laughs> and Ravage and Eduardo, who have been at ESPN for years, were like, oh, you went there, huh? Yeah, yeah you can't mention that. <laughs> so Yeah, hey, that was pretty funny. I guess Pixar, Disney, are they, are they all the same family or no? I don't know. I think they were, then they weren't, and then they were, and then they weren't. All the money goes to Warren Buffett, I guess. I investing. I don't <laughs> in I don't Omaha. Know. Uh DJ LeMayhew, really important to the Yankees. Uh eight and three when he starts for them this year. What a homer that was yesterday. Yeah. They called that was unicorn, right? The porch was open this weekend. The porch That was, was a open. Max Kepler kind of gotta find the wall there and jump up. Oh, that was nobody called out the screen. I, uh, yeah, I felt bad for Max there. Uh, no, snuck up on him. My uh, my shoulder felt that one. <laughs> uh, Trevor, Orioles, White Sox. Uh, the series itself, uh, you know, there's some good action in here. A, a lot of talent all over this field. Yes, I've got two things for you. What okay. if I told you it's April 17th and the White Sox haven't won a series yet? Um, meanwhile, a reminder: Yankees now the only team that haven't lost a series. Uh, Eight and yeah, 0. we messed that up. We kept saying the Twins, but they lost the series. Yeah, in Miami. it was the bad. Rays and I think the Snakes for a little bit, and then it's just the Yankees now. Um, the White Sox haven't won a series. Yikes! Coming off of last year, you'd you'd like to have that. Trevor, this Orioles team, I've been giving my kind of elevator pitch, like you know, I think the league's going to be ready. The starting pitching isn't there, and I I think both of those can be true. Their lineup is deep, and they will punish you. If they get a third time at your start or if they get into your not high-end relievers, these guys are going to do damage, and that's pretty much how they won the two games in this three-game set that they won, that um, their lineup's deep, man. Um, they're, they are good, and I, I don't know. They've got me second-guessing some things. I, this style of baseball that's being played this year lends itself to, you know, some young guys doing their thing. I don't know if this is particularly like the youngest roster, but like being able to play some defense, uh, you, you, you want to be able to do all the things, uh, in a baseball game, like be a ball player. Like that wasn't the case for, I don't know, five, six years. We're just trying to slug the ball around the park and we're trying to strike guys out. Like things are happening. Um, in this game, whether it be the stolen base kind of making a comeback guys, putting the ball um, in play. I think Dusty Baker even mentioned uh, there was a quote from him saying like keeping the ball out of the air. Hmm. And he was happy about it. Like that was <laughs> like, if you said that you were fired right. immediately. Um, like things are happening. I think that, and the Orioles are a, a good example of that. I'm still wishy-washy on the starters. I love you, Kyle Gibson so much. Uh, I want Grayson Rodriguez to do his thing. Um, but the bullpen's been okay. They've been able to score runs. You mentioned the lineup kind of getting a little deep there. Gunnar Henderson, what's he batting, Jake? Seven? He was batting For seventh them. yesterday. Uh, top prospect in baseball. Um, Mateo, is he going to be a one daughter all year? Probably not. Probably is Adley not. Rushman? He might be. This guy's winning me over. See, this is, you know, you talk about guys winning you over. Adley you never know what you're going to get. And when, when guys get handed the keys to a city right away, you're like, dude, like this is a lot of pressure for somebody. Um, I, I just saw on TV, uh, uh, Beatty's coming up for the Mets. And like, there's a, there's a newspaper article, I uh, probably the post saying savior with a question mark. Like we put a lot of pressure on these dudes and the big leagues is hard. We've seen it time and time again, but Adley is just freaking, he's the real deal, huh? Yeah. Oh man. It's, um, he is in control. 
uh, the game goes at a different speed for him. Uh, that he's he's special, special. And when you pair that with, uh, you know, I don't I don't even know what Gunnar Henderson is. Like I, I I'm interested to see where his season lands, but he's he's not going to be bad. Um, I, Jorge Mateo, you're right, probably doesn't one dot, but he's a guy that if he has a 700 OPS with his speed and defense. That'd be like a five war player. That's a really good player. Mount Castle and Hayes are both right handed threats. Like they kind of, you know, they're like <laughs> Orioles prospects almost, it feels like a generation ago. Uh, they're 26 and 27, like years old. Santander is there. Uh, he hit 30 plus bombs last year. Like this lineup bangs and their bullpen holds that. If you don't put them away early, if you don't put up some ugly numbers on their starting pitching, oh, man, uh, they're going to come for you. Um, and that's a really good recipe. I had something to say, but I feel like it's going to come off like uh, okay. aggressive and mean. Okay. I'm going to say it anyway. See, teams like this, they're just cocky or I, – I guess that's the word I'll use. They're just cocky enough. Yes. Or they don't care. Yes. They don't care about if they're down, and that's what you need. And I don't think Baltimore's had that in quite some time. Last year, you know, good year for them. Things seem a little bit different this year, and it's because, like you said, they just they don't feel like they're out of anything, and you better put them away. It's because they're not. Um, White Sox fans, uh, sound off in the comments. Uh, does it feel like last year? Uh, does it feel like there's just been a couple tough breaks? Like, um I don't know. Again, I, I watched a little bit of the last game. They're 6-10. and 10. Um, You haven't won a series yet. You know, you, you lost, I haven't. A, lost a couple extra. Or no, you won an extra inning game in this one. You lost one last series. I, Philly, Tampa, and Toronto coming up. I'm going to look right now. I haven't looked yet. I got to imagine their run differential is not crazy bad. Uh, White Sox. Run I'm looking right now. Oh, it's not too good. Okay. They've scored 74 runs and they've allowed 97. So that is bad. And hey man, I I don't want to I don't want to hit the panic button. It's schedule season. Phillies, Rays, Toronto, Rays, Minnesota. I mean, that is Two and a half weeks of potential playoff baseball teams that uh hey, be careful, White Sox. Don't don't dig that hole, man. Cause if you do, uh, I don't know. I don't know. Are they, okay. I I don't want to go too deep into this. We got a long show ahead of us. Are, are the White Sox like uh, a team that hasn't caught up to what this new baseball season is mm. and kind of how games are being played? Or I, I as I do watch White Sox games, and I, I, I shout out Oscar Colas for a walk off hit. I love yeah. him. Um, you know, I love me some Cuban baseball players. But do they seem like a team that isn't playing the game like other teams are doing? Like if, like the Guardians play a different brand of baseball than right. the Chicago White Sox. Is that a better brand of baseball? I don't, I'm not so sure. It kind of seems like it right now, doesn't it? Yeah, I mean, I, I guess some of the offensive stats say they are going. Um, eighth mm-hmm. in batting average, ninth in stolen bases, fourteenth in OPS. So you know, you you want obviously you want everything to be a little better. It looks like their bullpen is getting destroyed. So maybe, oh man, and guys are throwing a lot of bullets. Um, they might need a couple special starting pitching performances and reset the bullpen. Yeah. Um, That's always tough, man, especially early on in the season because you know your guys aren't gonna for the most part, not going to be stretched out and, and going uh, deep into games. You are reliant on your bullpen a little bit more in the in the early season. But then if you have, like, you know, even shorter starts and you're taxing your bullpen, it can get worn out pretty quickly. So you're right. A couple of reset starts, a couple of good starts from whoever maybe. And they have some guys in that rotation, obviously, at least some names uh, that need to do that. And things can change. Yeah. It's early on in the season, White Sox fans. Don't, don't go crazy. You've been without Tim Anderson. I have hope, and I always have hope, and maybe I'm just a big old dummy. I don't know. Go go win a series, survive this upcoming stretch, and then the schedule did get, you know, I think there were some Reds and some other teams in there, but yeah, 
It's uh, not what you wanted coming off of last year. Uh, Trev, the, the biggest boy series of the week, I, I think, is technically Rays Jays, man. Uh, the undefeated Tampa Bay Rays go up uh, and play Toronto. And uh, George Springer, how's your 53rd career leadoff home run? That's to, so awesome. To tie Craig Biggio, uh, his teammate's son, or teammate's father, I, I guess you'd say about that. Um, Bo Bichette, five for five in this game. You might hear more about him. Wink, wink, nudge, nudge. Um, and then, uh, yeah, they so they lose their first game. They lose the series the next day as Kikuchi, um, you know, cheese. punching tickets. What's uh, up with that? How's he throwing like 95, 96? Jimmy's Kikuchi. Uh, hey, yeah. some, some of those numbers has, have always loved him. Uh, Rays pour it on in the final game in Manoa, uh, a guy that people thought might have some shift regression, has some numbers versus lefties. Uh, tough start uh, to the season for him, and he's walking some guys. Uh, Trev, I guess, uh, on the whole, I mean, we knew the Rays were going to lose. Uh, you knew they were going to lose a series at some point. Uh, Jay's whole serve. Yeah, I wouldn't feel too bad if you're the Rays about this when you're going up to Toronto, uh, facing a banger of a lineup that's really been going off. My guy Chappie's still doing his thing. You mentioned Bo Bichette. Like they have some real deal players, and they know that. This is this is going to be a battle all season long. So you lose the first two on the verge of getting swept. You got Manoa, but your stopper's there. And McClanahan does it for them. That was a great outing. Manoa's had some struggles early on this season. The velo's kind of been down. The breaking ball, not so sharp in that game. And uh, the Rays obviously took advantage of that. So, you know, look, Blue Jays, you got to be feeling really good about yourself. The hottest team in baseball comes into town. You take the series from them in front of your home crowd. That's awesome. You got guys going off, doing things all over the field. And then for the Rays, you're kind of feeling the same way. Like, look, this is a good team. We were on the verge of getting swept and we beat their ace because uh, our ace is better right now. Yeah. So you fly home and you're feeling good. And you know that Coach Trev is coming at some point to uh, <laughs> watch the Twins play you. That has Maybe to- I'll get a freaking, do you think they'll give me an ovation there for the 14, 15 games I played? That has to be a real special feeling for them, um, yeah. <laughs> knowing that you're coming to town. Uh, hey, in, in a genuine way, you know, the, the things we can't measure in baseball, uh, the Rays, you're undefeated. You lose two games to a division rival. People were talking about your schedule a lot. McClanahan Manoa, that last game, and you put up a big day. I, I think that does feel good. Um that, that feels better than than you measure um in just any read in a box score or anything like that. Um God. Those Jays can hit, huh? Um, they can hit Manoa's. Uh, I have him as my Cy Young winner of the AL this year. Not off to a great start. Four starts this season. Uh, he's made it through five innings pitch only once. Uh, he's walked a bunch of batters, four plus batters in three of the four uh, games, and has allowed three plus runs in three of the four games. So not a hot start for him. Maybe he's going to finish strong though. Yeah, it's it's he'll figure it out. It's it's funny being in this part of the season and knowing that like so many storyline things haven't happened yet. Like so. Yeah. Right now, a player on your team is having a bad start, and they're going to have a fantastic year. <laughs> and that's just, that's how the cookie crumbles. There's probably some guy that we've been talking about, you know, being lights out, and by the end of the year, they might, oh my God. they're going to lose their starting gig. Like, it's it's a sicko sport, man. Um, speaking of sickos. 162, dude. It's long. Think about that. We're only how many games in right now? 14? Yeah, something like the, uh, 16, one-tenth of the season. Not Guys bad. are feeling themselves a lot right now. <laughs> Keep going. Only 90% of the season left. <laughs> Head down. Um, Trev, there, there's two last series. Uh, the Battle of Texas, uh, Rangers and, and the Astros. I mentioned, you know, we saw it on Sunday Night Baseball. Rangers take two out of three. And your Boston Red Sox going for a four-game sweep of the Halos um, as we record live right now. So do it, either of those get, get more of a reaction out of you? Go, go Red Sox, man. Going for a sweep. I know it was a big weekend for them. They had their uh, World Series uh, 2013 team in town. Uh, they had the Boston Marathon going. So this is a big weekend for the city of Boston in general. 
Uh, and to come out and do it against, you know, a, good, a really, I'm going to say it, a really good Angels team. It's got to feel good. The one thing I noticed is you got Garrett Whitlock. And, bro, can this guy just, can you just put him in one role? Can he just be a starter? I, I think that would uh, serve him well to, you know, have a role. Like, let's just keep this guy here now. Uh, seven innings pitch, three hits, one earned run with the five Ks. Uh, and now they have a great Monday matchup, too. Bayo making his season debut yeah. against Otani. People won't shut up about Bayo, but he's he's good. You watch him pitch, you understand he's got the stuff. He hasn't had like the results yet in the major leagues, uh, but some of like the auxiliary numbers, his FIP is good. He's got a really high BABIP so um, against him, so you'd expect those other numbers to kind of come down to earth and and be the guy. If he, if that does happen. I mean, things can look up. If you have a guy, if, if Whitlock continues to go and Bayo continues to go, like that's going to help that rotation. That's who we have questioned, and rightfully so, from the beginning of this offseason uh, up until now. But you have, you know, these two guys coming and doing it. That that changes uh, your outlook, and this is a, a nice little series for them. Four gamers to be able to win one and the chance to sweep it. That's awesome. Yeah, I mean, uh, Sox fans. You know, if Whitlock is that, um, if Bayo, Bayo is who you guys tell us he is, and if Chris Sale bounces back, then yeah, that obviously changes your recipe. And I guess what's tough with baseball is three of those things could happen, and we'll talk a lot of socks this year, or like point five of those things could happen. So let's see. Um, let's see. But yeah, they uh, strong finish yesterday. The bullpen holds. Um, you know, they get Otani. Family with the looks final. good, man. Otani gets uh, out the final out there, uh, and that was like their second bullpen. That was um, Brazier uh, getting it done there. Justin Turner, Kike Devers. Like, don't get it wrong. We we know who these guys are. Um, and, hey, get hot. Why don't you? Kenley, you're right. Um, Kenley looks really, really good. <clears throat> um Devers, how many homers does this guy have? Seven homers already. Like, I, I love when guys get paid like that and then continue to go. And whether that's like just totally feeling comfortable or just him being an absolute stud, probably a little bit of both. Um, Verdugo looks good early on the season. Turner hits his first homer. I think in the city connects over the monster. Mm. Pretty sick. Those yellows. Um, yeah, dude. This is a very interesting team. The AL East is going to be something. Like, I don't think we haven't talked about the Red Sox a lot. Uh, because we're kind of we focus on other teams. Obviously, we're going to talk a little bit more about the Yankees because you guys are really in tune there. Mm. The Rays got off to their fast start. Everyone and their mom is picking the Jays to you know go deep into the playoffs this year. So you know the Red Sox and the Orioles kind of get left behind a little bit. But this division is going to be absolutely nuts this year. Absolutely nuts. Uh, Otani goes today. A note from a producer's note. I'll label it. Uh, BBD was looking at Otani stats. Um. 047 ERA in three starts. Um, and he has a 883 OPS at the plate. So, um, no slow start, no anything. Um, there's, <laughs> there's nothing he can't do. I can't, I, I'm not going to talk about Tony anymore. I can't, people don't like okay. it. I'm too nice to him, but how could you not be? <laughs> this guy's, an, I mean, <laughs> every, like, even I'll talk to my youth team. And they'll talk about Shohei Otani, and they, and for them that's normal. They're like, "Oh yeah, Shohei, he does both." I'm like, "You don't, you guys don't understand. This has never been done before in the history of baseball." Ever. And they're like, "Well, I pitch and I hit." I'm like, "Yeah, yeah, you're seven. You're- <laughs> I don't want to ruin your dreams, bro. But it gets a little harder as you get up. <laughs> I love you ruining their dreams. Uh, and meanwhile, the it. the Angels conundrum." Trout, 300 homers, 300 doubles, 200 stolen bases by age 31. Uh, the only people in that crew are Willie Mays, Barry Bonds, and A-Rod. Um, so, yeah, I, I mean the Angels conundrum. Go go win Otani game, get back to the West Coast, and, and figure it out. Um, and, yeah, I guess my Rangers going away thing. Obviously not worried about Houston still. Um, man, Marcus Simeon, uh, you've, Trev, you've said it on here a lot. Um, just his personality, um, and by the way, what he does on the baseball field. I know he got off to a slow start last year, but he's got, I think it's the 100 home runs and 50 steals clubs. 
club in the past couple seasons. I think it's like him, Otani, and someone else. So like it, uh, they've added a lot of talent on that team. And thick neck Josh Young, uh, becoming more than just a talking baseball joke, might become a player for them. Oh yeah, I mean the Rangers look good, man. Taking two out of three in Houston uh, is no small feat. And now we're talking about an AL West with a bunch of different teams that can make the playoffs. I just wax poetically about the Angels. Are we going to start talking that way about the Rangers? I'm not sure. Uh, their offense can go get it. And then you look at like Heaney and like, I'm a friend of Heaney's. I like this guy. Yeah. But every time I'm like, is is he is he what they say he is? And he's kind of showed that the last two starts, man. It's like he's just got that little, He's he's found the arm slot that he needs. And like the heater usage that he needs, uh, and he's going a ton of swings and misses. Um, going up against Framber, Framber looked great until he didn't, and yeah. that was not really necessarily his fault. In that seventh inning, it was a double, an error. I guess it was his fault. He did the error was no good, but the walk killed him. Double error, single walk, single. All of a sudden, uh, he's down two nothing. So, and then Marcus Simeon. It's the homer or grand slam, excuse me. Yeah. And I looked up, I think he's got eight grand slams. I was trying to figure out who the active leader in grand mm. slams is. And I think it's still like Cabrera, Miguel Cabrera, which is kind of like obvious. Nelson right. Cruz is up there. Manny Machado's up there. But Marcus Simeon with eight grand slams. Like that's big boy stuff right there. I, uh, Trev, I didn't tell you this, but I, I've got a grand slam note coming later in the episode. Oh, yeah. Um, so yeah, you did not tell me that. So I apologize. No, I stole a little bit of your it's room. beautiful. Yeah. It's going to paint the full picture of the episode. Um, let's get let's shout out, go. shout out Hunter Brown. Yeah. When the Astros do click this season, it feels like we're going to talk about that guy a lot. The Astros are just fine. Yeah. People. That'd be all right. Let's do a little national league baseball. Please. Trevor Plouffe, your Philadelphia Phillies, they split with the Cincinnati Reds. Oh, okay. Uh, every other game, Reds win one and three, Phillies two and four. Uh, the final three games of this series are blowouts. Uh, Louis Sessa had to take one on the chin. Three innings pitch, 11 earned runs. Jake, don't talk about him. Talk about Will Myers breaking out for the Reds. Uh, Graham Ashcraft, MLB the show legend. And then Trey Turner, real Mudo on that final game. Uh, and this series had a nice uh, dollar night hot dog fight in the stands. Uh, Philadelphia, I bet. They split four. Uh, Pirates and Cardinals, they do the same. Split week, we hate that. Uh, don't get shut out in one of the first two games because that's how you lose. Pirates 5-0, Cardinals 3-0. And then a couple extra inning games, man. These Pirates are feisty. Um, and yes, I'm still cashing out uh, on them early on this year. Man, extra innings in those final two games. Uh, our guy Bay in the first game, although we don't know where we stand on him now. We know where we stand on Andrew McCutcheon. He's doing a lot of good things. So is Nolan Arenado. Shocking. Very shocking. Mm -hmm. Happy birthday. Brewers take three out of four. From the San Diego Padres in San Diego, man. And that last game was as electric as it gets. one nothing. Wade Miley, you Darvish, Devin Williams is in the game. Bases loaded. Just incredible. Soto with a great at-bat. We're battling. Nola misses a double down the line by two feet. And then Williams punches Christian's ticket to end it. Amazing action in this one the Brewers won that first game in 10 innings really fun baseball series uh, out in San Diego these Brewers out to a great start Miami they take two out of three from my snakes and it's maybe not the two you would have expected they win the mad bum game okay take it don't even want it they win 3-2 in the middle one but the D-backs 5 nothing against Sandy. Zach Gallen versus Sandy. Two guys traded from the Cardinals organization. Um, and, man, my guy Corbin Carroll hit a homer uh, off of yeah. Sandy that looked – it looked so Tani-ish. Like, his, the ball comes off his bat, 
just a little different, man. All that being said, uh, the pests in Miami, Hampson, Segura, Segura, he lost his voice. Um, good for you, Miami. Win some series. Cubbies take two out of three from the Dodgers. Uh, they win the bread games. Uh, although that final game, man, I was watching that. The umpire was brutal, uh, especially to our Dodgers. Some veteran guys uh, not being happy with the ump there. That being said, go Cubbies, go in Hap. You know, taking that money to the bank, uh, four for four mm. in the first game. Uh, Justin Steele with a good, uh, good start and. That Cubbies bullpen, that's going to have to be, if they go places, going to have to be good. Uh, They were good. Uh, I'll take the umpire out of it. Uh, And I think you might be talking about Cody Bellinger in a little bit, Trev. And, hey, that is what happened in the National League. Trev. Good job. You're so good, man. You're so good. Your National League standings, the Atlanta Braves. My God, we got to talk about them in a little bit. 12 and 4. Uh, the Mets are 10 and 6. Interleague Bruisers this week. Hey, Marlins, 8 and 8. Let's go. Philly, 6 and 10. Nats, 5 and 11. The Milwaukee Brewers are 11 and 5. Cubs, 8 and 6. Pirates, 9 and 7. Cardinals, 7 and 9. Red, 6 and 9. Snakes lead the NL West, obviously, 9 and 7. Dodgers are eight and eight. Everyone else sub five hundred. The eight and nine Padres, the five and nine Giants, and uh, the Rockies. Some of my Rockies Twitter follows are starting to get worried about the season. Um, oh, yeah. They're they're starting to think this ain't the year. Which um, I don't know. It's early. Direct it's, those to Kelsey. It's early. <laughs> yeah, bring they're, they're not your rocks anymore. Okay. They're wing nuts rocks. Um. I mean, Trev, this is kind of sloppy. We got a lot of splits. I mean, I guess, how about this? Dodgers, Cubs, um, you know, two baseball headline teams uh, link up for three. And, hey, if you're the Cubs, Cubs fans, you're tuning into this. You don't want to hear me talking about umpires. You don't care. You won two games on the West Coast against the Dodgers, which flashback to talking baseball two years ago when the team got disassembled after a West Coast trip. Um yes. Hey, you won three. Oh yeah, against the Dodgers. We talked about that West Coast trip. Like, hey, if you go out and do it, you might add. If you don't do it, everyone's gone. Gone, gone, gone. Golly. Yeah. Th- look, this is. I really enjoy watching this Cubs team play because they have like kind of a bunch of different type of players on their team. It's kind of like a mish, um, mishmash. Is that a what the fuck am I trying yeah. to say? Anyways. Justin Steele is one of these guys that you kind of, unless you're a Cubs fan, like you're not going to give this guy a ton of credit, at least in, in in my mind, but he's had a hell of a start to the year. He goes seven innings pitched, two earned runs. Syndergaard not looking so hot for the, for the Dodgers so far. They haven't been able to find that special sauce for him. Maybe they will, uh, but he goes six innings pitched with the three earned runs. He does strike out nine people though, uh, but his overall numbers don't look too good uh, as of yet. So they win that one. Uh, eight to two, which is nice to get the opening win. Uh, Bellinger gets the freaking strike call on him during the ovation. Jim Wolf, <laughs> friends with your brother Randy, he lives down the street from me. It's tough. Now, I guess there's some protocols that the teams have to follow, but there's also this thing called feel. Yeah. That we should probably have a little bit. I, but Jim Wolf, I really like him. He's done some stuff with us. I'm going to give him a pass on hot. this one. He is hot. Good it's- shape. He would fucking put you in a chokehold and oh. you wouldn't get out. You'd die. He'd choke you out. Yeah, I mean, Jim Wolf versus me, BBD, and Jim. You know, that goes 50-50 if we fight 10 times. Three like, versus one? Yeah. I got Bieber's, like, wild card there. He might figure some stuff out, some pressure points or something like that. We'd he have to be organized. I, I think yeah. he deletes one of distract. us quick. Like, it's like a... You know, he would. He would, I think just, he would just knock you out first. Yeah. <laughs> I eliminated that one. And now it's a 2v1. And now cards are on the table. Um, Trev, this is the guy. Um, and by the way, he didn't have a crazy series. He did hit a homer. Uh, Seiya Suzuki. Uh, if you're a Cubs fan, you have to think that, you know, he is going to be a, a key cog in your team if you're successful this year. He makes his debut. And, and that was kind of an eye opening moment for me. It's like, oh, yeah. Like they still have him coming, yeah. You know, it 
as we get sucked into this early baseball season and what does it mean 10% of the way, um, you know, for 90% of the season, Seiya Suzuki could be an impact piece for the Cubs and all of your favorite teams that you know more than us about, I'm sure have a guy or two that's about to join the party. Carlos Rodon for my Yanks. Um, Severino, like I, I'm excited for those guys to come and, you know, ideally have fantastic years, but um, so much of this season is yet uh, to have the story be told. But man, Trev, you said it. Up and down the lineup, it's major league guys for the Cubs. You know, Patrick Wisdom, they have him listed in the eight hole. He used to be like their cleanup guy. Um, they Their bullpen has gotten it done, like you noted uh, from last year. Um, they felt they had some momentum there. Uh, how much will they pitch? We'll see. But hey, they're heading to Oakland. Might as well get hot. I like it, you know. And, and they took advantage of the Dodgers bullpen in that first game. Four solo homers in the eighth and ninth innings. Um, and then the second game was really good in this series for the Dodgers. At least the Cubs were were leading that one one nothing. The young guys for the Dodgers get on base, and the new guy, Dal- Dalton Varsho, uh, knocks him in. First pitch, walk-off winner on Jackie Robinson Day, might I add. That was pretty cool. Uh, Walker Bueller is referencing some Drake lyrics in his tweet, the rookies and the vet, so I kind of like that. Uh, I wish Walker Bueller was pitching, man. I really miss that guy. I don't think he ever thinks about me, but I think about you, Walker, just I in think case about you were wondering. Too. Who Trev, yeah. you lost me. You said Dalton Varsho. I think you're thinking of someone else. David, so David Peralta. David Peralta. Sorry, okay. Varsho. Yeah. That's what <laughs> I'm sorry, Dalton. I'm it's sorry, okay. David. Yeah. That's my fault right there. That's uh fine. Peralta comes off the bench, first pitch swing in, ground ball through the three hole, which maybe would have been an out last year. Right. Possibly. Although first and second or second and third would they have been there? I don't know. Anyways, uh, and then yeah, the Cubs come back and do it. Um, against Urias in, a, in that last game. So a good series for the Cubs. Um, again, talk more about Bellinger later. Patrick Wisdom, six homers mm. on that leaderboard for freaking home run leaders. He's a guy I think we circle. You talk about Seiya Suzuki, if you're a Cubs fan. Patrick Wisdom's got a one daughter. He's not going to be a one daughter guy. But you need performances right. throughout the year from guys who, you know, like, I'm sure if you're a Cubs fan, you like Patrick Wisdom. But you're probably... Saying, hey, if you know if this guy can put up like a 750, 770 OPS and drive in some runs, you'll be happy. But if this guy goes out and figures some things out, and all of a sudden, you know, he has a, a career year and he hits a bunch of homers and he drives in some runs, that changes the outlook of your team and your lineup. Every team needs guys to step up. We talk about the Brewers and they're the freshmen who they've kind of been struggling lately, but got some things done. Um, we'll talk about that in a sec. Um, you need guys to step up. And if Wisdom steps up and say Suzuki is who we think he is and Bellinger kind of continues a little bit of a resurgence that he finds in LA, then we're talking about a completely different team right. with completely different goals. We're going to act completely different at the deadline. And it's just that fact. Like if guys step up and play a little bit better than they are expected to play, things change. And, uh, you know, I, I know Jimmy was kind of curious of it the past couple years. There's a little bit more of an identity, right? Like you re-signed Ian Happ. You signed Dansby. Nico Horner is a part of it uh, for the future. Say a Suzuki. You know, like you, there's a core here now that what can we do? And you're right, man. If, if Patrick Wisdom, you know, he's Hot. got a career 774 OPS. 772. If he has an 800 OPS this year, compared to if he has a 720 OPS this year, that affects your season. So um, there's hope. There's hope in Cubsland, and these two teams are linking up uh, next weekend in Wrigley. So Love that. Uh, let's uh, let's see the follow up and what that looks like. Uh, Trev, I, th- I think the other biggest NL series took place on the left coast. Brewers, Padres, uh, two really strong teams. Brewers take three out of four. You got Hayter and Devin Williams. Uh, they go six up, six down in, in one of the earlier games this series. Um, and then you see uh, Devin Williams is battling 
uh, through the last inning where San Diego, that place wanted to explode. It looked like they were gonna. And then Devin Williams uh, kind of drops it on the table uh, for the last batter. Uh, fastball to Trent Grisham. Um, what, do you, what do you have here, Trent? The last game was great because we saw um, some small ball being played. And I, I just talked about how these freshmen, the Mitchell, Terang, and, and Weimer for, for the Brewers, got off to a really hot start. They've kind of cooled. Um, they hit 170 on the trip, 21 strikeouts, and 53 at bats. So when you're in that in that funk, you got to find a way to contribute, dude. Like you want, it's about your team winning. Okay, you're tr- and you're trying to stay up, so you need to you need to contribute at at, at some level, and. I've told people this. This is like a sequence episode at one point. Uh, If the third baseman is playing over in the hole, even if he's in, you can still bump. Like it is available because if a third baseman is playing regular position and he's in and you lay down a nice bunt, we've trained so much on coming in and just turning and throwing. Like that's a pretty easy play for a third baseman, especially a guy like Manny Machado. But if you're playing in the hole, you have to now not only go in, but you're going away from first base as well. So you're you're throwing across your body and almost behind your body. So I tell people that all the time. Like if you see the third baseman over, even if he's in, bunts in play, bro. And you don't have to be perfect. You just have to get it down. That's exactly what he saw. That's what he did. Machado tries to make the throw. He throws it away. Cronenworth is right there. Or no, somebody else is right there. Whoever was playing second base was right there to Kim. Uh to yeah, to hold him at first base. Uh, but then they manufacture a run. I think he ended up stealing the base, scoring on a sack fly, or I mean, it was it was awesome, dude. Uh, that's the kind of baseball that like is kind of making a comeback, if you will. Yeah. Uh, and and I like the fact that they found a way to contribute, even though they weren't seeing the ball well at the plate. That's th- that's game changing, man. Yeah, I mean, like, that's the stuff that's going to keep you in the big leagues, even if you're struggling. If you find a way defensively, base pass, whatever it is, if you're struggling at the plate find a way to contribute it in some capacity. I thought that was awesome to see. Trev, uh, uh, the kids uh, had kind of a tough road trip, <laughs> uh, but we're talking about that instead. Uh, so, yeah, when, when you're having a tough time at the plate and you can do something like that, uh, I think it can change your mentals. It, it can change everything. That one run won the game. Uh, Wade Miley, Brewers Devil Magic, um, Good to have the Brewers back in the Devil Magic game. Yeah. Um, and did yeah, you see man. the? Did you see the like that play I was talking about? Sorry, I have to go back to it. That was the play that Darvish got called for three disengagements, and he didn't know that he had three disengagements. So that, actually, he didn't steal second; he stole third. Mm. Uh, but he got to second because the first disengagement, Darvish kind of got on the mound and stepped off real quick, and like to reset himself. And I don't think they let him know that that was a disengagement. So he ends up picking over twice. And on the third one, the Quentin Berry, who's the first base coach of the Brewers, already had asked the umpire, like, hey, that was a that first one was a disengagement. Right? He's like, Yeah. So third one comes over, he picks over, he doesn't get him out, boom, straight to second base. So like little, little funny things that uh, are happening this year that would never have happened before. Rowdy and Willie Adamas back at it uh for the crew, by the way. Um Rowdy with a couple homers in this series. Yeah, uh, dude. That last inning was awesome. Like I, you know, if if you're really if you're really getting through your Monday today, if your voice sounds like mine, um, I I would rewatch the whole last inning. Like that was, that was awesome. Um, man, the Juan Soto spitting on changeups, I awesome. Juan Soto, I we had the TV set up. I saw Juan Soto spitting on Devin Williams changeups. And on the other TV, I had Luis Arise uh, spitting on Zach Allen's changeup, and it was master classes. It it was as good as you can be at the profession, um, and that was really cool to see. Um, I mean, Trev, we got a couple funky splits here. Uh, you know, the Marlins win a series over my snakes. Happy for them. Um, I, I guess a little, a little open board. It, it, what do you have? Uh, any, anything else you need to get off your chest for the people? Not really. Yeah. To be honest with you, 
I'm ready to move on to the interleague. Yeah, uh, Pirates. Sandy's been, Sandy's had a tough run of it uh, last two games. I'm sure he'll figure it out. Uh, he'll be okay. I do like your Corbin Carroll reference of him just having like crazy pop for a guy his size. Comes off different, man. Longoria told me, I asked him before the season, I said, is this guy, what's up with this guy? He goes, sneaky, sneaky pop. Dude, I, I thought he hit, I thought it was going to be a bloop to center field. It got out of the park. Um, and the way Jeff Passan uh, talked about him, like, you know, some guys are different and he's, he is a different breed. Um, good job, fishies. Good job, pirates, man. Uh, they are, they are the pesky pirates. I was hoping they'd be early on in the season. Um, yeah. Shout out Bryson Stott, 16 game hitting streak, uh, putting himself at the top of the lineup, like forcing the hand, which is really cool to see. Hey, I like, man. I like kind of, you know, you look at that lineup, he's not a guy that you mentioned first or second or third or fourth or fifth, but when you play like this, you get your name mentioned with those guys. So he gets, uh, you know, put on top of that lineup and he's producing. It's, uh, Billy's got to go though. Phillies, let's go. Let's go. World Series hangover, baby. I, I do like that their team has a little bit of like, you know, all right, Bryson Stott, you, you want to hit? Go lead off. Uh, Harper, we might need help at first. Throw the glove on. Uh, they're figuring it out as a team. Uh, and, yeah, it's early, but uh, let's go. And I know Reds, Reds fans happy that uh, Will Myers starts to go a little bit. Uh, his swing is interesting when it's right, man. Kind of, kind of easy other way pop, uh, which is oh yeah, oh yeah. He's got real deal pop. Good, good. You know, no you, batting gloves. Just you opened my eyes to that a little, Trev. Um, you know that that oppo pop. That's that makes a guy different, and Will Myers has that uh, easy, easy. Let's do some interview. You ready for it? Trev, it's a little bit of an interleague sweep week. Uh, get ready for it. Tigers, they win the two games they play against the San Francisco Giants. Benching a guy works out. A.J. Hinch is a great manager. He hurt us. Uh, the Tigers walk off both games. Your guy Nick Maton in the first game gets it done. Uh, and then they walk it off. Miggy Caps. In that second game. Uh, hey, good for you guys, Detroit. And then, I mean, you talk about a bad ending for San Francisco. Five and a half hour rain delay, and then they bag it. I, I mean, that's as unfun as it gets. Uh, guard dogs, two out of three from the Nationals. Uh, gonna be honest with you, wasn't dialed on this series. Uh, happy, happy for you, Guardians. It looks like. Jose Ramirez in the first game with Josh Bell. Yep, Josh Bell again. And then, hey, I know it doesn't mean much, but the past two Patrick Corbin games have been wins for your Nationals. Uh, <laughs> I know it doesn't mean much. Uh, Cleveland, they take two out of three from the Nats. The New York Metropolitans, they sweep the Oakland Athletics, including a dramatic final uh, extra inning games. Pete Alonzo is going. Uh, ding dong city for Polar Bear Pete uh, as he won't stop. And like Trev mentioned earlier, uh, don't rewatch the first game. 17 runs, 17 walks for the New York Mets. Yikes. That's gross. Uh, Brave sweep the Royals. Uh, I mean, yeah. Braves sweep the Royals. We're actually going to talk about them because the Braves have been winning so much and we've been bored with it, which is really unfair to the Braves. So uh, Charlie Morton salts him away. Snicker had a fun little umpire run in uh, this series. And Sean Murphy, remember that trade? Well, guess what? He's uh, He's been balling out uh, this year for your Atlanta Braves. Uh, and your final interleague series, your Seattle Mariners sweep formerly my Colorado Rockies, including Luis Castillo going for that perfecto bid on the final game of the series. And oh boy, is Jared Kelnick happening? Baseball people are talking about it. What a diving catch. Never mind what he's doing with the stick. Oh, and you know it's a J.P. Crawford pod. Uh, and that 
is what happened in the interleague series this weekend. You're done, bro. You finished your baseball boogies. I'm happy for you. You you Woo-hoo. freaking you got through it. My right goodness. We don't have to touch on all these series. Some of them you're like, okay, that makes sense that the Braves uh, did what they did and you know the Mets did what they did to the A's. But I know you wanted to go in a little bit on the Braves and kind of talk of just, I guess, just talk about how damn good they are, which a lot of people know. But Second best record. Nice sh- second best record in this young baseball season. We are bored with it a little bit, right? Like, yeah, yeah, we know they're good. Yeah, we know they're going to be in the playoffs. Are they going to win the NL East? Like, I guess that's the biggest, you know, maybe, probably type situation. But the fact that they are, they've gotten to this point where like, yeah, they're just going to win every series. And, you know, what what else can we say? Oh, Acuna is going off. Awesome. Like, what, I mean, go up and down that lineup. These guys are freaking doing it. And Chris Rose and I kind of look real stupid right now because we both picked the Cardinals lineup one through nine. We thought was a little bit better mm. than the Braves lineup one through nine. And so far that probably hasn't been the case. Although the Cardinals lineup's no slouch, uh, but these Braves have absolutely been doing it. And it's headed by two guys who are on the freaking A's yeah. just a short time ago. You guys had them. And now Sean Murphy and Matt Olson both have one dots leading the way for the Braves lineup. Jake, tell me how much you love the Braves. We, uh, Trev, we are bored with them. Um, oh my gosh, Jake, hold on. There's six dudes counting uh, Arcia. Yeah, with on base percentages over 400. I mean, Trev, what? I said I'm. I'm pretty sure I said it in their TPP, or I said it when it happened. Sam Hilliard is off to an incredible start for them. Uh, he was He's like a freaky athlete guy from the Rockies. I, I said, like, you know, that, that smells of Braves devil magic. Um, guess what, though? The more important point, Sean Murphy, Matt Olson, uh, Austin Riley, and Ronald Acuna Jr., they don't smell of devil magic. They're just really, really good, and they're going. Um Ronnie's one dotting, uh, seven swipes uh, and three homers. Matt Olson, five home runs on the young season. And, uh, you know, they, guess what? They, they can pitch a little bit too. So I, I don't know, man. I mean, we, um, they just snuck up and stole the division from the Mets last year. And we said, okay. Um, They've got a fun little stretch at San Diego, and then they host Houston. So uh, I guess we'll we'll probably be talking about the Braves a little bit more because those are big series. Yeah, they owe the they owe the Padres a little payback, didn't the uh, Padres mm. come into town and take a series from them? So mm. here we go. Uh, yeah, you know what? And and some of the stuff you're talking about, we we like their starting pitching, but I don't think Bryce Elder was on your bingo card um, early in the year. He's two and zero. He's got a one, or excuse me, yeah, two and zero and three starts, seventeen and two thirds innings pitch. He's only given up three earned runs. That's a one five three ERA. So when you get contributions like that, uh, mixed with the guys you already have in there, the bullpen's been great. Sean Murphy. I mean, I knew he was a good player. I didn't watch a lot of him because he played in Oakland. We don't really watch a lot of those games. Not only is he lights out offensively, but defensively too. He's like. He just does it, man. I think he's second to JT Uramuto in um, a defensive war over the last two years. And you add that to what he does offensively. And you just have like, it's like when a team has a really good tight end in football and it's just mismatches all over the field. Like you just have that advantage. If you ever play fantasy football and you get one of the top two tight ends, whether you know it's Kelsey or whoever the hell the other one is, um, you just have that advantage when you look around the league and see what you know catchers' OPSs are. Like you have a massive advantage over every other team, and they were—I mean, a team that already <laughs> had good catching, like two good catchers, right? To like think like, hey, let's go bring in this. Is isn't that a little unconventional? But it's obviously paying off. Yeah, I mean, I, I think 
Darno has adapted the partial DH role that if you can do that, the problem is not not a lot of catchers hit. So that's where the Braves were kind of allowed to do that. But yeah, man, it's Sean Murphy, man. I, I, I feel bad, and that's why I tried to drive it home this offseason. Like, if you watched a catcher who's a gold glove winning catcher who career has hit um, 18% better than the rest of the league, day in, day out, you're enamored with that guy. The problem is nobody was watching Oakland. So now that he's on the Braves, I, I think Sean Murphy's going to have a lot of a lot of young fans in Atlanta, and um, I think he's probably going to have some moments this October. Uh, I don't want to just keep harping on the A's and how much they stink, and but think about the motivation that you have showing up to the park. If you're in Oakland and you know your home park is the Coliseum, which some funny things came out about that this <laughs> weekend. There's a possum just like living. Awesome is that living true? Here. Yes. You have literal shit coming out of the drains yeah. at times. Uh, it's not a motivating place to play, but you got a brand new park down there in Atlanta. You got a team that's supposed to win the World Series. I mean, this is a completely different type of atmosphere you're walking into every day. And you have all these guys who are fucking superstars around you and they're working hard and it motivates you. And it is just like, talk about <laughs> what's the, what's the saying? The shit, how uh, the outhouse to the penthouse. Mm. Literally, like, literally him and Matt Olson have to just be going like, thank you, baseball guys. We suffered. And now here we are in saying that. I did see something with Oakland and I want to, I don't want to talk about the 17 walks. I guess there's a, there's a date uh, that it's kind of like a, they're all showing up to the park. All the, these fans are showing up to the park. Go look that up. They're going to like God. for one game, they're all coming to show like, Hey, like there are fans here. We're just not coming because your team, your team you're putting out there just isn't competitive. We'll try to put that in the notes. I'll, I'll, I'll look for it, and, and we'll try to put it in the notes, Beavers. Uh, I think that's pretty cool. And that's pretty cool by the Oakland fans to do that. And, man, if, like, this is going to be one of their last seasons, I, I I love seeing that place packed. Yeah. And this might be the last time we get to see that place packed. So check that out. I know they were saying, like, if you can't afford to go to a game, they're trying to figure things out. Um, But Oakland, yeah. Oakland to Atlanta is a... Not the cities, but the ball clubs and the I mean and, picture picture being stadium. a catcher, man. Picture Sean Murphy throwing on the pads in a hundred degree game for a horrible A's team. Um yeah, man, that's that's very real. You know, people can pretend it's not. Um and I, I really think the only other thing I, I have from Interleague Mets Mets sweat those A's you talked about. Uh Pete Alonso, eight home runs leading the league. Um He's a special ball player. I love him. Um, I'm like obsessed with Pete Alonso. Did you see he was full to full turtleneck? Yeah. Yes. Gotta love it. Like Pete in a turtleneck makes sense, dude. He, he's one of the guys that is so uh, versatile. He can go no undershirt and yeah. like makes sense, and he can go sleeves with a full turtleneck. And it makes sense. That's range. He's undefeated, people. man. And you want to know why? He just wants to play baseball. Like, that's the creature he is. Um, guys, if we didn't get a ton of your team today, Guardians, I'm just going to be honest with you. That Guardians Nat series, I almost got nothing. Stone Garrett, be a dude. Guardians keep winning, but my God. Nats um, come back on Sunday. Natitude. Patrick Big Corbin. comeback on Sunday. Patrick Corbin. Um, I tried to give that one away. And Luis Castillo. And you might hear about some of these guys in the second half of the show where you could hear more about your team. And Trev, the second half of the show is brought to you by Muggsy Jeans. I'm wearing mm. them right now. I wear them pretty much every day. Uh, they loaded us up with Muggsy's because John Boy loved Muggsy. They're his favorite jeans. They've become my only jeans. Um, they're the most comfortable jeans, and they have chinos 
and joggers made from a buttery soft pattern stretch material. Oh, mm. God. Pump that in my veins. Uh, their words, they're the best thing to happen to legs since chairs. So, I mean, that's, you know, that's kind of the historic stuff we're talking about here. And with their 100% comfort guarantee, uh, every single order gets free shipping and free returns if they don't fit. So, you need to get your hands on these Mugsies. And with code BASEBALL at Mugsy.com, you will save 10%. That's code BASEBALL, Mugsy.com. Get yourself some pants and maybe click the link in the description. Get your Mugsy on, Trev. I got two things real quick. Uh, one, I want to go back to interleague. Shout out Von Grissom. Gets the call after Arcia gets hurt. Gets to go ahead and knock yeah. uh, late in the game. Not bad. Got to love that for the kid. Uh, it's probably been a rough couple of weeks for him, you know, getting sent down. And when he thought you had a beat on the starting position, to be able to come up and do that, go Vaughn. Secondly, I was thinking about chairs. Okay. What do you think? The, like the first chair was probably like a rock that was rock. just shaped like a chair. And people were like, oh, this is sick. Yeah. Like, I have back support, lumbar support. My legs aren't tired. So that's cool. Uh, but I watched this this series called Alone, and they just drop you off in the middle of mm. wherever. And the, the one I watched, there was like in the Patagonian mountain range or you know, somewhere in Alaska. I think I watched one of those seasons. And the people who do well make chairs. Mm. They'll go make a chair because you need to sit down. Yeah. And there's like a little bit of comfort to a chair. This chick made one one time nicest chair I've ever seen. She just made it really quickly and she just put it like on the edge of the lake and she's like, I'm just going to sit here. Right. So chairs are cool. And I think there's a big difference between sitting and laying like, you know, back, Oh yeah. Back in the old office when we were in, you know, like crazy insane grind mode, like, you know, we'd all look at each other and be like, all right, I gotta, I gotta like lay down for 20 minutes, like not sit. I gotta lay down. Um, Okay, so there's some. Take I think that. I'm more like in, I'm more inclined if I just need like a like a nap. I don't. I'm not a big napper, but like I feel like I could probably nap better if I'm like in a comfortable chair and it just happens than if I go lay down and try to nap. I used to be a napper. I kind of lost it. Um, we'll see. One day, Jess comes from a nap family. Uh, Trev, your standout performer had a lot of people napping at the dish. My standout performer is Luis Castillo. I'm pulling up his baseball reference right now because I don't want to miss the stats. I just don't. He obviously had a really good game. Seven innings pitch, two hits, zero earned runs, nine Ks, no walks. That's what I love the most when I see the high strikeout total with the low walk total, especially zero. That's really good. He had a perfect game through six. I think Profar ended up breaking it up. Um, like a two strike hit, but well, this guy has been absolutely lights out to start the year. Um, and going back to Mariners and trades and, you know, things that can change like a ball club, this trade was it last year, I believe massive for the Seattle Mariners. We said it at the time, uh, but it's been probably better than we thought it was going to be. He's got a 0.73 through four games started 24 and two thirds innings pitched, 26 strikeouts. He's got a 0. .6 whip. You're talking a little bit more than half a person is getting on base mm. every inning. As a defender and an offense, it just, I mean, there's zero pressure on you. Like, this guy is going out there, and it's cruise control. He's the ace of the staff. He's your stopper. He's whatever you need him to be. And he wasn't even on your team a couple of years ago. Like you just got this guy, you extend him, and now I mean, it's it seemed like a no brainer for every single contending team to go get him at the time when the Mariners did. We're like, whoa, this is kind of cool. But it, I mean, one of the better trades for a team in recent history to go out and like be able to get an ace like that, like an absolute bona fide ace. Yeah. is incredible, and he's been nothing short of spectacular since he's been over there. So I, I just – it's awesome, dude. Um, shout out Luis Castillo and the Mariners. 
Yeah. They're yeah. winning over. And for a while in the beginning of the season, Jake, I had Mariners fans saying, will you please pronounce them dead? Yeah, right. Did last year. And I said, no, I'm not going to do that. They have to do it all on their own this year. And if they do do it, Luis Castillo is going to be a big, big part. If you're the Reds, um, boy, I hope Noel V. Marte works out for you. That was the big piece in that trade because uh, it feels like Luis Castillo is like <laughs> he's entered like a new range of like pitcher. Like it was like, oh, yeah, he's a guy. Like he's nasty stuff. He's good. He's uh, that Mariner crowd. He's feeding off of that. He's feeding off them being a good team. Um Four games, he's given up two earned runs. Uh, He hasn't given up a homer yet this season. Um, And, yeah, man, he, like, it fits. Like, like he gave up a line drive. There were some runners on base. J.P. Crawford got it, and him and J.P. Crawford looked at each other. Like, both kind of got the same swag going on. Like, yeah, we we run this town. Um, And, dude, hey, we wanted to give the Mariners a little Mariners talk because uh, we live in fear of them too. But uh, Kelnick, man, like made some adjustments. He's confident now. He took some lumps, which I think are paramount in a guy's development. You need to learn how to fail. So, like as bad as you know you feel as a hitter when you're going through it, a guy like him who never failed at baseball in his life, right, needs to learn how to fail. And make the adjustments, and he's been able to do it. I want to go back to Castillo. Just randomly throw a guess out to what you think his ERA plus is. 701. (laughs) It's 586. (laughs) It's always fun. That's incredible. I know it's four starts, people, but holy shit. No, there's those are always. And he did it in the old school Mariners unis. Right. uh, Which was. Pretty awesome. It's, there's always a there's always a couple fun one of those. My my favorite is uh, Zach Britton in 2016. His like special special season out of the bullpen. He had a zero five four. His ERA plus that year is eight oh three. Um, <laughs> that <laughs> it's, uh, he's worth eight people. That's yeah, awesome. He's eight. He's seven hundred percent better than the rest of the league. Did you say he ha- yeah? So <laughs> he hasn't allowed a home run yet in four starts. Okay. Yeah, and just a. Uh, An unrelated side note to that, Garrett Cole, who had another very good performance, also hasn't allowed a home run this year um, and has a 0.95 ERA. Um, But good for Luis Castillo. We don't need to talk about the What the fuck (laughs) did you just say? Um, Devin Williams, 2020 ERA plus. Any guesses? 0.33 ERA that year? Give me 1,000. 1,375. What? Just no one put the ball in play against them, right? That's just how that kind of works sometimes. Basically. Airbender. Uh, Trev, six whip. I'm going on the other side of the ball. Uh, it's because I, well, it's something that I've got my eye on all season just because we do, uh, you know, a half ridiculous betting episode before the season. But it became one of my fun stats this off season. And Trev, you know, it used to be, I think it was old Jim Codd or Ken Singleton calling games, and they'd say, you know, one hit at the ballpark, that's an okay day. Two hits, that's a good day. Three hits, you're having a great day. Bo Bichette, five-hit day at the ballpark. Um, And why I keep talking about this guy, he led – the AL and hits the past two seasons, which means two things. You play a lot and you hit a lot. He is now leading the AL and hits again with 27 hits this season. Um, and by the way, he's a career 300 hitter. Like, you know, I, I realize that baseball advanced in some good ways and we look at OPS now and everything else. You know, what does it all mean? Um, and by the way, 838 career OPS, um, a 997 OPS this year. Um, he is 25 years old. He just turned 25 in March. Um, we keep hitting the hammer uh, on Bo Bichette, uh, and rightfully so. Um, it, you know, when you start seeing bold in the, in the baseball reference, it's like, what does it mean? This guy is going to be one of the best hitters year in, year out for the foreseeable future. 
Um, and five hit day, man, that's a, <laughs> it's like impossible. He did it. He's going to be a free agent. I believe at, at 27 years old with the track record that he's had already. I mean, this guy is going to make a ton of money. Is he a future Yankee? Thought you might say that. I, I love him. I've loved him since I saw Instagram videos of him in high school hitting bombs. He looks the exact same. Swings the same. Um, I try not to talk about him because I feel like if I start, I'll keep talking about Boba Shett. I love the way he plays the game. I know some people have issues with him defensively. Um, I don't care, man. Yeah. Like, try to make the routine play and hit like you hit, dude. Because this guy is. He never really gets in, in in my Twitter sphere, my social media, in my baseball, you know, acumen. That doesn't make sense. Sure. But in my baseball world, he never gets mentioned with like the best shortstops in the game. Like never. And I think he is one. If you had to give him a top something, what would you give Boba Shett as far as shortstops? Did you give him top ten? He was on my top ten list. I want to say he was like in the four to six range. I'd have to double check. Okay, so you're so you're higher on him than most people because I don't think most people would would give him four to six. I feel like he'd be back more towards like that ten, and I just don't I don't buy it. Yeah, I might I might have to double check because if I'm lying about that, I'll feel bad. But um, yeah, I I have problems with he plays a lackadaisical defense sometimes, and shortstop is like a position that spiritually it feels like you can't do that. But you can also mature and get older and get better. And I, I think and move to third base and become a gold glover and you know, it at the same time, I I think Xander Bogarts uh had some of the same things said about him and all he's done is hit and he got I think in recent years he got a little better at shortstop. So like you can you, you know, can improve. You can always get better at this game up to kind of like a certain age. And um if Bo Bichette is getting better, like, holy shit. That's when... That's when these when guys were signing for these these deals, all these shortstops, like, do you think he was just like, yes, yes, yes? I had he, signed a, he signed a, a pack that, to buy out his arbitration. He's making 33.6 uh, through this year through 2025, and then he'll become a free agent. This dude's going to get paid. I, I had him at seventh... Um, Turner, Lindor, Correa, Bogart, Swanson, Seeger, Bichette is where I was at. Which that, man, people just, yeah. that position so stacked, man. Willie Adamas. Um, yeah, yeah. Hey, Wa- you know what? Wander Franco. I think, he's in the, I think he is in the conversation with a lot of those guys in the middle. Uh, but I do like all of those guys you mentioned as well. So maybe it's just a lot that of stacked of a flavors. position. It's a strong position. Um, strong. Left side, strong side. Trev, yeah, some give it to me. of the fellas had big weekends. Dirt nasties on fuego. That means I'm on fire, baby. Like Waco. That beautiful, big-ass catcher that we talked about <laughs> already, Sean Murphy. <laughs> Five for 11, three doubles, nice. two homers, seven ribbies. Two walks and a hit by pitch. That's a big series for him. Jake Berger. We don't talk enough about Jake Berger. Okay. Uh, he went four for nine with three fucking home runs. Love that in a series. Five ribbies. Let's get some guys on base in front of him. Three runs and a walk. Will Myers, our guy, seven for 14, a double, two homers and seven RBI. Cedric Mullins, that's Jimmy O'Brien's Cedric Mullins. Yeah. I think he owns all the stock. Yeah, he Cedric does. Mullins. At least most stock. of it. Uh, six for 11, a double, a triple, six RBIs, six walks, two bags. Heimer Candelario, seven for 14, two doubles, a homer, three RBI, three runs. J.D. Davis. We don't talk enough about J.D. Davis. Hmm. He's only in two games. Went four for seven with two homers, six ribbies, two runs, two walks, and a hit by pitch. Francisco Lindor, we have a six shirt hmm. in our merch shop. If you want to go check that out. Four for 13, two doubles, two homers, eight ribbies. Four runs and two walks. Josh Bell, six for 12. Four doubles, a homer, three RBI, two runs and a walk. And for some reason, we only have one pitcher on here. Mm. And that's Garrett Cole, who you just talked about. Nine hits, two hit, excuse me, nine innings pitch, two hits, no runs, 10 Ks, four, the complete game. Shuddy. And that, my people, 
Who's who's in Fuego? Yeah, there's uh, you know, you Darvish, Miley. We clipped them along the way. A couple of those Yankee starts, rowdy, but uh, hey, pitchers are tough. It's uh, <laughs> that's Dalton's lane, and that's what you got. A Jake Berger. I'll talk about him. We need to talk more about Jake Berger. Why not? A lot of pop. What a name. I've driven by his childhood home. Whoa. Both of them. Jake, what a name. Yeah. Berger, what a name. Uh, Trev, there were some comments last episode where people were like, we love the IL segment that snuck up wow. out of nowhere. Now we know about our audience. I mean, okay. Uh, Moncada, back. McCormick, some vision problems. Uh, Jock Peterson, we hate that. Tough Giants episode. You lose mm. two to the Tigers. Jock, G-Man Choi, walk, walk John Gray gets hit with a liner. Uh, Urias from Baltimore. Giancarlo Stanton goes on the IL for the Yanks, Trev. Um, kind of a yearly thing. Four to six weeks, I think, at least came grade out on two, that. Hey, let me ask you about that. Cause it said grade two. That's a big hamstring pull, but like, he like walked off the field just fine and like was in the dugout, like walking just fine. I pulled hamstrings like a lot, probably five, six times. I pulled my hamstring. It's not easy to walk, dude. Is he just a That's superhuman a or like a grade two? Well, I think there's pretty good arguments. He is a superhuman to a degree. He hits a baseball yeah. harder than anyone ever has. Um, when you see him, he, he asks for a runner. You see him pull up right before the base. He says, I need a pinch runner. Um, yeah, man. I mean, just just brutal. I I I don't know if he's a tough guy under it all, and he's just been getting hurt enough, or maybe he was so pissed off in the moment he gets hurt again that he doesn't even feel that. But yeah, man, it uh, it sucks. I I mean, you can kind of pencil it in. Um, and he's like an all time great player of this game. Um, MVP. Look at the home runs. Uh, so he's gonna yeah. be a Hall of Famer. We'll uh we'll see where he's at. Um, Chris Martin to para Will Smith on the concussion IL. Mm. Your Will Smith. Um, so yeah, yeah, those got got a DM from Fayo saying advocating for this segment because it is very informative. You know what's happening, and we compare the I hate this segment uh, and keep that branding with I love this segment. Maybe after we start talking about. Uh, guys who return from an injury Frago and that gives injury. us uh, it's tough it just gives us gives us you know a, what, a better Fayo? taste in our mouth of guys coming back why are you so smart i might we might have to flip it with enfuego though because i like going Get up it. well if we mm. come the guys coming Into back awards. after fine flipping with enfuego as well coming up right before awards and awards are brought to you by the DraftKings sportsbook trev you know baseball's in full swing we've been cashing out some big boy bets recently at John Boy Media. And you can place a $5 pregame money line bet, get $150 in bonus bets if your team wins. Same game parlays, rack them up for a big winner. Uh, my buddies have been doing ridiculous everyday parlays, and a couple have clicked. Because if you do enough of this guy will get a hit, this guy will get enough strikeouts, you can... You know, okay. if the baseball gods play with you that day, you could put something together. Um, so join in the big league action now. DraftKings Sportsbook. Download the app. Sign up code TALKIN. New customers can bet $5 on any pregame money line and get $150 in bonus bets if their team wins only at DraftKings Sportsbook with promo code TALKIN. Trev. Awards! Nice. Thank you. My gosh, been waiting. We're actually going to see Kelsey. She'll be in New York yes. as well. I'm excited about that. Are we ever going to show the video of her doing it in person? One day. One day. Golly. It was unreal okay. in person. We were all kind of shook. Was. One take. One take. Well, of course it's one take. It's Kelsey Wingnut. Yeah. All right. My, um, my award is called the Poppy Seed Muffin Award. Yes. It's a very random name for an award. I, I, I understand that. And you might have a feeling about poppy seed muffins. Do you like poppy seed muffins, Jake? Um, not really. I, I'm more indifferent than anything. I'm, I'm more, I'm probably going to grab a different muffin if there's a group of muffins. Okay. I used to love sure. poppy seed muffins. I'm talking, I was a fiend. If you, you know, my parents would go to Costco or something. They'd buy us 
fucking pack of poppy seed muffins. I'd be all over it, dude. There's like a little lemonish flavor in mm. those, and you get the poppy little little pops in your mouth a little bit. Mm. It's what I would eat. I didn't have a great diet growing up. My yeah. parents gave me just trash food all the time, but I figured it out. Now I don't put that stuff in this temple, but I used to love them. And then one day, and I'm sure you've had this experience. Yeah. I ate a poppy seed muffin. I might have ate two of them. And following that, not because of the poppy seed muffins, but just because this is how it works, I got sick. Yeah. And it was a stomach issue, and I was, you know, vomiting and just bad. And you know, like, the last thing you eat before you have stomach issues, you don't want to eat for, right. like, a while. Like, this, you just, you put it away, you're like, you're puking it up, and you're just, I can never, I, I smelled it, and it was disgusting, and for, like, for years, Jake. Yeah. For years, I couldn't even look at a poppy seed muffin. After being in love with them, mm. I couldn't even look at them. Until one day, I saw one, and it was just so good. And I said, I remember our relationship. Mm. And I'm going to eat you again. And now I like poppy seed muffins again. I feel like Cody Bellinger mm. is Dodger fans' poppy seed muffin. Mm. We know what Cody Bellinger meant to the Dodgers um and you know won an MVP for them, you know, wins the World Series. Like it was at one point a no doubt Dodger for life. Right. A guy that was gonna be there. People loved this. They people loved Cody Bellinger. The ladies loved mm. Cody Bellinger. He was one of the Dodgers. Like he was a guy in LA that even if you didn't know about baseball, you knew Cody Bellinger. All the memes, everything was perfect. This guy was on top of the world, and then 2020 hits. They win the World Series, but he bashes his freaking shoulder, has to get surgery on it, and just wasn't the same player. And, like, not even close. 2021, no good. 2022, no good. So Dodgers fans really soured on Cody Bellinger. They still had, like, a love. They remembered the love. They soured on him. The front office soured on him so much that they end up releasing the guy. They could have brought him back for like 18 million bucks this year, but they looked at his numbers and said just wasn't the case. But then Cody Bellinger goes into a different uniform, comes back to Dodger Stadium, and I think a lot of people remember Cody Bellinger very, very fondly now. After having that bad taste, mm. they've washed it away. He comes back. He gets the big ovation, and then he reminds them, of what he could do. I thought he had such a fun series out there. I wanted to highlight it. He goes and robs Jason Hayward of a home run. He goes and hits uh, the first home run uh, given up, uh, first left-handed home run given up by Julio Urias since like last July. He goes and hits a homer off him. And I think Dodger fans and probably the Dodgers front office are like, dang, like maybe we should have like figured some stuff out. And mm -hmm. they tried, dude. Like they tried to have you know, tried to fix his swing. They tried to work with him to get him back. It wasn't working. Dave Roberts, after the game, said, sometimes you just need a different voice uh, in your head. And I think that is that is accurate. Change of scenery we talked about was going to be good for Cody Bellinger. But him coming back to Dodger Stadium, I think a lot of people remember how much they love Cody Bellinger. And it made me kind of sad. Like, I, I think that he should have been a Dodger for life. Uh, I know those two years were brutal. I know they were. Uh, but I think he's going to figure things out in Chicago this year, so I'm happy for him. But to me, and talking to my Dodgers friends, Dodgers fans' friends, uh, they said the same thing. Like, maybe it was tough, but now seeing Cody, we wish he was still here. That's the Poppy Seed Muffin Award. Cody Bellinger, go do your damn thing, man. Go do it. Have fun in Chicago this year. Take him to the playoffs while you're at it. Let's go. I mean, powerful stuff, Trev. Um, Thank you. Yeah, man, I... You know, I, I, I mentioned it on here, and it was like uh, when we were doing the playoff streams last year, Co Tuck was in town, and Cody's his guy. Um, and I was like, yeah, it's weird. You know, he's been playing, and he, you know, he hasn't, he hasn't really been that hurt, right? And Cole was like, his shoulder, dude. He had that, the 2020, remember, home run, shoulder, like, popped out, and he had stuff going on there. I think there were effects from that, shoulders for hitters and pitchers, obviously, one of the bigger baseball ones, maybe the shift being gone. That again, if his if his hitting stats are league average, he's a plus player for everything else he can do. And if he can find a little more, um, 
which you should be rooting for because that means it's a payday and that means it's everything. Um, but, yeah, when Cody Bellinger's good, it's it's good for the sport. I saw something on MLB Network that I'm going to share here. Uh, Alana Rizzo was talking about it. Or, no, it was Lauren Shihadi. Never mind. Lauren Shihadi was like, you know, you know – something about a person uh, when they go back to where they were playing for a long time and the reception they received, not only from the fans, but from the players. And she said, you know, if you watched all the Dodgers were on the top step cheering for this dude, like he's very, very much loved in the baseball circle. I want to put that out there. It's great stuff, Trev. Um, Poppy seats, huh? I'll crush a poppy seed muffin right now, although I don't because they have a lot of sugar in them. I would right now because I'm so hungry. Mm. Uh, Trevor, fantastic. Really good stuff. Um, I am going... Uh, hmm. I'm going with the, uh, the telescope award. Mm, love telescopes. Telescopes are pretty wild, right? Like you mess around yeah. with them in science class and you, you know, you, you can do those like you're looking at germs. I mean, you could look That's at a microscope. But. You could look at stars. I mean, they're all different versions of <laughs> telescopes. They're scopes. They're scopes, right? You're either looking into space or you're looking into little fucking germs and shit, right? Um, baseball has a lot of stats. A lot of stats, Trev. Mm -hmm. And I think I just zoomed in on my telemicroscope and I found a stat that I think is pretty, pretty more telling of a hitter than I think I thought. And I want to get your opinion on it. Jordan Alvarez comes up last oh. night. Base is loaded. And they put his base is loaded stats out there. Um, and when Jordan Alvarez has been up with the bases loaded, the hitter, it's Looney Tune. He's a 429 hitter, a 468 on base, a 1.301 OPS. Um, and when you look around at a lot of the great hitters in baseball, you'll see that. Julio Rodriguez, early on, great bases loaded numbers. Um, you know, I've just been clicking around some players recently. Uh, your guy, Joe Maurer, Trev. Oh. Um, When there's the bases are loaded, you feel that in a stadium, right? Like, here we go. Nowhere to put you. Like if, you know, this could be this could almost end the game. Man, when the pitcher doesn't have a spot to put you, some of these guys' numbers are sick. Um, and by the way, uh, another guy that deserves a shout out. Uh, in his young career, Fernando Tatis Jr. is a 474, 1.5 OPS guy with the bases loaded. Um, this one is for me, and I, I also think your approach at the plate um, dictates some of this when you know the pitcher has to come at you a little more. I think that can help who you are. Uh, Manny Machado, Miguel Cabrera, like mm -hmm. Corey C. It's, I think it's a really good merit of who you are as a hitter. When that pitcher has to come at you, um, what you do at the plate. And I don't know. It's just kind of my new favorite stat that I'm digging into, and I kind of wanted to get your uh, a little bit of your reaction on it too. These are the sharks, bro. You know, right. Sharks smelling blood in the water. Like th these guys, like you think about Yordan. First of all, he probably feels this way no matter what's going on, right. what situation he comes up to. But when bases are loaded, like you said, he knows – Stress is on the pitcher. And for, and most of the time, pitchers have the advantage. But in that situation, as a hitter, you feel like, A, you're right, there's nowhere to put me. And B, you got the bases loaded because of a reason, whether you're not sharp enough or or we got some hits off you or whatever it is, like something's happened. So you're not feeling as confident. And you can be aggressive because you know they want to get a strike one. Uh, if they do get behind the count, you know they're going to come with a heater. Like there are just so many things um, that make you confident as a hitter. You know, like you, all you got to do is hit a fly ball, and you're gonna and you're gonna score a run. Like you, there's pressure taken off of you, and it's one of the few instances where that happens as a hitter. Um, it's it's a great feeling. But these guys you're mentioning, 
they know that like, or they feel it even more. And it just, it turns you into, you finally feel like you have the advantage, which like, again, doesn't happen that often at the plate. So I, I love that. I, I was ta- I was thinking about that with Marcus Simeon uh, yesterday. Yep. Now you, you brought this up. Yeah. And I bet if you went around like the leaders of hitting with uh, runners and scoring or uh, runners in scoring position and bases loaded, like there's some real dogs there because, because these guys, when they finally feel like they have the advantage, they ain't going to miss dude. I'm Manny. looking at Jordan's right now, 429, <laughs> 468 for the one dot three. He's already got three grand slams. Um because I, I, I just he, want he doesn't need any freaking help, but when you're in that situation, it's advantageous. You know, I, I think there's appreciation there of like, you know, think every time Jordan Alvarez comes up to the plate, a pitcher is trying to make a perfect pitch because he's a monster. And when the bases are loaded and it's Jordan's game, like it always blows my mind about baseball that there's not more outliers. That there's not like a guy who hits 550. Like everything in life, there's like outliers. Like, no. But when the bases are loaded and the game is transformed and you have to pitch to me, there are some guys that when those are the rules, then outliers kind of start to happen. And you see guys with 1.5 OPSs and things like that where I think nerds would tell you that over time in those small samples, it would level out a little bit. Guess what? I don't think Jordan levels out ever. I think if you got a pitch to him and the bases are yucked, you're in a bad spot. So that was the bases loaded thing I was talking about before. Coach Trev, not so hot in bases loaded. It's a different uh, 247 sport, hitter. Two grand slams, though. You wanted those slams. Yeah. I think that's what it was. <laughs> you weren't slapping it to right. You wanted the slam. Four ribbies did a lot for you. And those uh, – that level of humbleness that I just gave you guys right yeah. there. You don't see that too much from me, but that's because I got to get out of here. Chris Rose is already yelling at me. I have baseball today to do. It's an excellent show. I love you guys. Take we love you. Me, Poppy. We'll see everyone midweek up. John Bino, my voice will be back. Big topics. Maybe. Maybe. God, see I hope. See you soon, Poppy. See you soon. Two socks. Poppies, poppy seeds. Today, this episode, it was like the bases were loaded for us. Yeah. God, we were driving. Just a couple runs. sharks. Driving in runs. Machado, 12 grand slams. He's young. Yeah, he's nuts. He's fucking crazy. Might end up on some lists. He's 30. Huh. <laughs>